Pastor George Borkart, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. What to do with the rest of my life? That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Hey, if you love our videos, if you are learning about your Christian faith in places you never expected to learn about your faith from, Missouri Synod Lutheran pastor, and as Jack Russell, who's hiding, terrier named Thor, go ahead and like and subscribe today. Support us by giving today. Link in the description. Your tax-deductible gift keeps higher things at a youth organization all about passing the faith to the next generation. Keeps us going. So oftentimes, one of the most stressful things for young people is what to do with the rest of their life. Does God want them to be a lawyer? Does he want them to go to college? What college does he want them to do? Does he want them to be a welder? What does he want? It can be very scary. It can be very stressful. Almost crippling. Because it's a life-changing decision. What we're going to do today is law gospel this a little bit. And we'll continue it in another video later on. But I want, I want to sort of just think this through through with law gospel terms and so we can at least remove the fear from it. Okay? When we think of what to do with the rest of our life. In terms of God, God's will being like an exit ramp that we need to find and a road that we need to be on, that if we're not on, somehow God doesn't love us or we, we wreck our lives. Um, it's a very law way of doing it. And there's no comfort there because there'd be no way for you to know for certain that you've gotten off at the right exit, that you're doing the right thing, that you're in the place where God wants you to be. All law because it's all based on your doing, what to do with the rest of my life for you, God. So we have to sort of step back and rethink this in terms of law and gospel. So let's set the law aside for a second. The law can help us and guide us in the sense that um, anything which breaks a commandment is off the table. So, um, one of my college students used to say he wanted to be a hitman. That's murder. Off the table. Thief. Off the table. Porn star. Off the table. Now, that's what the law can help us with. But the law can't actually help us get the answer that we need. Not fully. We need some comfort. We need some gospel. We need to, we need, we need God to rescue us from this. And so what we do is we 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 remember Calvary. That's the place to go with your question. What did God do for me? Well, He died for me. Well, how does that help? Well, He has set me free from having to find which one which route to go because he is the route. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's come that we may have life and have it abundantly. And so we are now free from fear. We are free from despair. We're free from worrying about what God wants because after he's spoken to us in his law, we're free to do anything or try anything to be anything because we're forgiven because we're we're free to do good works of love and service for our neighbor and this is usually the part where somebody says well if you tell kids that they're free they'll just go fornicate okay they don't need Jesus to fornicate. They do sin all by themselves. And justification by grace through faith and how that is lived out doesn't mean straight sin. You may want to sin and you may want to, dis to, to go right there, but not everybody else wants to. We just want comfort in what we're doing. 
or before we do it. And the comfort is whatever you decide to do, whichever path you try to do after you've heard the law of God is in freedom. Because of Jesus. Now, you may have some guides along the way from the law. Mom and dad, teachers, authorities that God has given you, pastors, fourth commandment authorities may guide you along the way. Their wisdom isn't just their wisdom. It might be God speaking to you since he's given those authorities to you to hear. And also common sense if you're not good at math, perhaps you shouldn't be an astrophysicist. That may not be what's for you. It might work out, though. You can try. Free to try. Free to fail. Free to learn from your failures. Because failure isn't always a bad thing. You just told those kids to get Fs. That's not what I said. I said try. And that might be the way God teaches you too through your failures. We think that God only works through things that work out, but he works through failure too. He teaches us when we fall down, how to get up again and how to trust him through it. And so if you want to be an astrophysicist, then try to work to be an astrophysicist. If you want to be a welder, try to work to be a welder. You're free to try. And the gift is, when you're done trying and you get to wherever it is you go, you know that this is where he wanted you to be because you're there. Calvary, Easter, forgiven. And this is seen in, in Exodus when God tells Moses to go take the children of Israel out of Egypt. And Moses is like wanting all these signs. How will I know you're for me? How will they know you're for me? How will I know they sent you? When you brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. So after you've done the thing I've told you to do, and after you've done the thing that I've given you to do, I'll see you there. And that is funny in the one hand, but gift in the other. He's not sitting on the edge of his seat waiting for you to, to mess up. He's there on the other side waiting to give you the thumbs up because he is such a God who has set you free to love and serve your neighbor. To love and serve your neighbor. There's another thing to think about as the law is a guide in this. God loves your neighbor too. He wants good for you. He wants good for your neighbor. So how does what you're doing love and serve your neighbor? Oh, and lastly, you don't have to do this or churchy things for him to love you because he loves you in the giving up of his son. He's going to love you if you're a pastor because of Calvary. And he's going to love you if you're a teacher because of Calvary. He's going to love you if you're a welder because of Calvary. He's going to love you if you work at Kmart because of Calvary. It doesn't just become works when you want to find out what to do, it still can be grace. So be free. Try. Go and have fun. College it up or don't college it up, depending on what God has for you. Check with the parents, the authorities, see what they say. Check with the counselors, see what they say. Check with the law of God to see what is hedged off for you. And then go and have fun. And he who's begun a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. In, the, in all of it, be comforted. Because God is going to see you through it. He might teach you by you falling on your face. That won't be fun. But he'll still be there for you. And he'll still love you. And that is a way that he will guide you through it. We'll talk about this maybe next week a little bit with part two. But for this one, free to love and serve. Oh my gosh, I have to go because he's stealing stuff off my desk and who knows what kind of damage he's doing. Free to love and serve your neighbor wherever he has put you. K.
Calvary, Easter, baptized, that's you, free. I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this has been our Things Video Short.